All right, guys, welcome to Frightmare. Like a semi truck hitting a three year old, we're off to a bang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually, actually, this is a very uh, unique experience for me. Uh, my name's Aaron Lupton, I'm with uh, Room Org, and I've never actually done a QA with someone who was a child actor before, so this is going to be kind of interesting for me. Sure. Uh, to be sitting here talking to the gauge man himself, Miko Hughes. Everyone, put it together for Miko Hughes. Thanks, guys. So, I mean, it's always child actors are always interesting to me, but it's a lot different when I think your first big role is in a, a pretty successful horror film, Pet Cemetery. So, yeah. how did you, how did your parents decide that at such a young age you should start acting? Uh, as far as I know, the story goes, my mom thought I was very precocious and took direction well, had a good look, and I just got lucky. Um, I don't know how how it exactly went down. I know my dad worked in special effects, so mm -hmm. uh, there was a little bit of experience you know, with the industry, um, but it was mostly my mom that just uh, tried to get me an agent and take me to auditions, and uh, I got lucky, for sure. That's great. Well, I got a little guy myself, and he doesn't take directions particularly well, yeah. so he's not, <laughs> he's, not, he's not entering acting anytime soon. Sure. So I know it's, it's sort of a difficult thing because I think you were, what, three years old? When you did Pet Cemetery, uh, twenty-seven months filming, and then three when it came out. So wow, a little over two. Twenty-seven months. So there's no way that you would actually remember anything from the film. Yeah. Um, no. But you must remember. <laughs> this is going to be a short Q and A. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks for coming out, everyone. Yeah. Um, but but you must remember. You must have memories of actually seeing the film for the first time and seeing yourself in the movie for the first time. Yeah, I saw. Um, clips or I knew scenes I'd see them very separated segmented uh, but to sit down and actually watch it all the way from start to finish for the first time uh, that wasn't until it was about 12. And what was it what was it like like what was your experience watching yourself in this film which you know a, a children dying in films is always a pretty big taboo and this film almost crosses that line sure it, it's a pretty it's a pretty hard scene to watch right when you yeah. get hit by that truck well uh, I, what was it what, what was it like to see that i don't know it must have been um yeah i think they uh they they didn't gore it up as much as they could have i think they were no. debating what to do with that um because because i was so little and they didn't want to have me in makeup um, for too long because right. that might be too intense to handle but uh um, yeah, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that crazy because I had seen parts um, separated and then putting it all together. I knew the scenes; it had been talked about a lot uh, growing up, and I knew the story essentially. Um, so, watching it wasn't wasn't that surprising. Um, I think the scenes that I wasn't there for for the filming was what was the newest. For me, I know Zelda freaked me out. I wasn't scared of myself, but I was scared of Zelda. Yeah. Um, because I had no idea that was coming, or I wasn't there for any of the filming of that. Um, yeah, a yeah, lot. A was... lo lot of people have stories of Zelda. It's what I what I always remember is when I think of you in that film. Obviously, there's the the horrific scene of you dying, and then there's um, the uh, death of uh, Judd Crandall. Yeah. When you take the scalpel to his Ankle. back of his ankle and yeah. that's like tendon and I'm just like Ooh. Yeah. I still like I can't watch that was yeah, it, it's it, gnarly. It, it must have been kind of neat though to see yourself doing that to an old man yeah, <laughs> yeah it was fun why not <laughs> so um, from that from Pet Cemetery, um, what uh, what was your what, what was your next big thing that you did after that? You were in Kindergarten Cop kindergarten not too Cop. long after that, yeah, right? Yeah. So did did Schwarzenegger bench press you at all, or get to play? Oh, with he could bench press ten of me easily. I'm <laughs> sure at that time. Now he was really nice. It was it was a cool experience uh, getting to work with him, and it was just fun. It was a bunch of kids, so we just were playing constantly in between filming. Um, I remember a bit more of that. It's still a little vague, but yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And how old were you then? Like eight or something like that? I think it was four. Oh, four. Yeah, it was only a couple years later. Yeah, I don't think, I think four I have some vague memories of. So yeah. It's kind of like if you were sitting here asking me, do I have any memories of junior kindergarten? I'd be like, eh, well, yeah, I got a couple of them, I guess. And I stayed in touch with a, a few of the, the other kids that were in the class throughout the years. 
It's kind of weird. Really? It's weird fraternity of sorts. Like. <laughs> and then you have that line in it. What is it? Uh, boys have penises. Girls, girls have, have vaginas. vaginas. It's true. I verified it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Around what age did you figure that out? <laughs> uh, the, um, um, so what, do you have any memories of that, of them kind of sitting you down and being, okay, you're going to say this, and it's kind of embarrassing? Yeah. But. Well, I think the thought process was that I didn't know what I was saying. And my parents knew it would be memorable and it would be stand out you know my mom said she really debated she said is that wrong to do that but uh she knew it was it was innocent and it didn't like affect me i you know i didn't think too much about it and uh until much later and then i realized what it was i think later on it kind of uh became a thing because i got teased a lot growing up that was uh, she felt kind of bad after the fact because of that. But now, with enough distance, it's great. I love it, you know. So, but that, that's fun. interesting to me that you were teased because I was. I would almost think you being in these... I mean, Kindergarten Cup was a big movie at the time. It had big A-list actors in it, so I thought it would have been like, ooh, it's... You know, well, you when, you're, cool when you're seven and people in the mall are coming up to you saying, hey, say the line, say the line, say it. You said that thing. Well, yeah, say it. Like, I'm seven. Who the hell are you? Like, leave me alone. Like, that was... That was weird, but you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, and uh, does anyone have any any questions they want to ask for for Miko? We will open up the floor to you guys at any time. If you guys have any questions, yeah, right over here. Uh, I have a question about the newest um, pet cemetery. Sure. What did you think about the change of Ellie? Oh, hopefully, with no spoiler alert. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Ellie being the one. I haven't seen it yet. Garbage. I did see it. I did see it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it, you know, it was a fun. It was a fun idea. I think I got to give him props for for taking a chance. And you know, Stephen King signed off on it. So, yeah, um, I take it kind of maybe as a compliment in the sense that does that mean they couldn't find anybody to do what I did in the original? Is that why they had to do that? Really? Yeah. Huh. Wow. Well, it, it's an interesting idea. I did like the the scenes where she's she can she's coherent. She can talk, you know, much more in detail um, with her dad. It, it kind of explores what is it like to be undead from the pet cemetery. That was weird. That was that was fun. I think they they had something there, um, but then I think they kind of lost it. They just went off and did other stuff that wasn't as as compelling. Yeah, I felt that too. I think I think there just wasn't chemistry yeah. in the family, um, and I, I feel like in the original you feel that family connection, and in the new one it it, it just kind of felt like they were playing at the those roles for whatever reason. I don't you know who knows, but. I did, yeah. I think the third act is is the weakest. Um, I was all in, um, you know, in, when she first comes back. Um, but then I think there was there was like a certain turning point where it, it didn't it didn't connect with me anymore. But it was fun, you know. I'm glad it happened, and uh, um, I'm happy, you know, to see people still enjoy it and and still going out to see it. And yeah, yeah. I think the other thing too is that with the remake. You kind of, if you kind of knew exactly what was going to happen, it would have just been the same sure. story with different actors. Like the Psycho remake that was yeah. shot for shot. Yeah. Like, the I, same I definitely appreciate, you know, taking a risk and, and having, bringing something new to the table, for sure. I mean, the original, what I love about it is, is the ending, is that it's such a dark ending to the horror film, which in the 80s was a little, still a little bit rare. It, in the 80s, it was still usually about the good guys beating the bad guys. Yeah. And so they found a different way to give it an even darker ending kind of thing. Nice. It was a very twisted, very twisted ending for the remake. Yeah. But, uh, but that was a good question. Does anyone else have any questions? Yep, right over here. Um, when doing a story like Pet Cemetery, where it's dealing with childhood death, um, did you find that you learn about mortality younger? Or? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, maybe if I was a little bit older, 
I would have, but at two, I didn't really even know what I was doing, probably. Um, I think, you know, growing up acting, a lot of it was just playing pretend, which kids do a lot anyway. So it was just a very specific and, and concentrated and, and, you know, everybody's, well, volume. No. Hey, we got, oh, oh like, no, we got freaked me out. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Hot just mic. like a professional version of, of playing pretend. So, um, yeah. I. But maybe seeing the film for the first time would have had that effect on you a little bit. Maybe. I think at 12 you have a concept of yeah. death already. Um, and I was familiar with horror and horror characters prior. So um, It's funny that you saw the film only one year before I did, because I think I was about 13. Oh, nice. Saw. Yeah. <laughs> it's strange. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was another question. Yeah. yeah. So um, I always wondered if they had ever talked about um, doing a new kind of nightmare monster, like a uh, new nightmare. Yeah. Um, and if they have, had they talked to you about it? Um, not that, uh, not in any official capacity. Um, I know Robert recently said he's he's got one more movie in him, which would be great if it was Freddy. Um, I know the rights to the franchise just went back to Wes Craven's estate. So I don't know if or what they're thinking of doing with that. Um, I kind of this year I was approached uh, by a small team of people that are were trying to get some things going for a, a fan film. Um, uh, Vincent Desante, who did the uh, Never Hike Alone fan film in the um, uh, night or was it Friday the Thirteenth franchise, uh, he's on board with it. Uh, um, it, it was, they have a script for it called it Dylan's New Nightmare, and it's what if Dylan was doing uh, living, you know, 25 years later in that same universe, and Freddie comes back. Uh, we shot a teaser for it. The Indiegogo is going right now. It's a fun little idea. So yeah, we're hoping to put together something really, really neat with that. Um, but that's totally fan based. Uh, as far as official, I have no idea. Yeah, sure. And how about, uh, how did you come to be cast in A New Nightmare? Uh, I auditioned, and I remember I had to, like, freak out in one part of the scene, and I just started rolling around on the ground and, like, <laughs> screaming and stuff, and I guess Wes thought it was cool that I'd just go for it, and, yeah, it was fun. What was, because uh, at that point you would have been... Seven? Oh, seven. So you're still young, but you could, yeah. do you remember what it was like working with Wes at all, or... Who you worked with the most? Yeah, Wes was my favorite director ever to to get to work with. He was very calm, very um, usually pretty soft spoken, mm -hmm. um, but but he got the job done. He was a professional. He knew exactly what he wanted and, and how to get it, and uh, he assembled a really great team around him, um, which makes all the difference in the world on a set. Um, yeah, he had he had the reputation of being a very genteel horror director. Yeah, I remember absolutely. Yeah, um, and what about Heather Langenkamp? Yeah, what Heather's like, Heather's how, great. What was she like? She's for a mom? sweetheart. <laughs> um, I had a crush on her. Which is, <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> I had a crush on my it's like stage mom. It's like having a crush on your teacher. Right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's such a sweetheart, though. She's always been like fantastic, and I saw her recently at another con, and it's always good to to catch up. So. All right. Yeah. Anyone have any questions about New Nightmare or anything else? I, I have one. So yeah. if this thing happened, like with Robert, would Heather still be alive and be your mom? And be I have I have no idea. I mean, for the for the for the fan film, uh, I can't say. Yeah. You know, we're we're trying to get funding for it. It's kind of dependent on where that lands of how much we can do. I know they have ideas that if it does well that it can continue and expand yeah, and and add more people to it. So uh, hopefully, if, if anybody wants to contribute, it's on the Indiegogo. So, yeah. As a child, was it scary, like, acting with Freddy Krueger, or was it just, like you said, like, make-believe and fun? Yeah, um, there was one day on set where I got a little freaked out. I think I was just having a bad day anyway, and they scared me intentionally to get a good reaction and then I was just I was not having it I kind of threw a fit and but yeah that was that was a one-time thing and it was fine um, for the most part it's not scary filming 
a horror movie um, or any, you know, because it's it's all people, a room full of people like this standing around. Everybody's got a job to do. They're taking breaks, getting snacks, smoking cigarettes. And then, you know, when it's time to shoot the scene, everybody focuses, but it's it's in little moments. It's not when it's edited and the music is set to it. That's where the atmosphere comes in. And that's where you kind of can really let yourself get creeped out. Um, I don't know what the first scary movie I saw was. Probably, if it counts, Beetlejuice. I mean, yeah. it's like, not scary, but it's freaky. It's like weird. Um, I saw that 10-ish, maybe? I don't remember. If I had to guess, I'd say something like that. Yeah. In the back. What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I always kind of go to this weird one. Um, I haven't seen it in years. It just really had an effect on me when I saw it. It was Audition. Uh, okay, a lot of yeah, There's some horror fans in here. All right. Yeah, it's like a really, really effed up Japanese horror movie. I heard it was when it was released it was marketed as like a romantic or like a like a drama because it's all about their connection and then which had to have been so weird watching that and not expecting a horror movie and then what happens because it's such a slow burn you know it doesn't really get crazy till the end so i mean it's it's definitely what makes that movie so screwed up is that the first half or three quarters of it it is a drama it is a ro you know, yeah. kind of romantic like relationship drama basically and there's like little hints of well that's weird or why would they do that there's the scenes of what's going on in her apartment and yeah like but uh, yeah that's like on a, it's on a whole nother level yeah yeah um, what about your favorite like project that like what's your favorite acting memory favorite acting project new nightmare yeah, yeah. because I was I was old enough to remember it and really be involved I was involved in a, a big capacity on it for a kid. I think I got third billing, which is pretty pretty rare. And I was I loved Freddy. I loved the character, even though I hadn't seen a lot of the franchise at that age. It was weird at that time. Freddy and Jason were like pop culture icons. They were almost like superheroes. Um, whereas now, like you don't really see that. You know, I mean, there's like monsters, but not. They were on like breakfast cereal practically. Yeah, it was yeah. weird. You know? They were on lunch boxes. Yeah. You buy your kids Jason dolls for Christmas and yeah, stuff like that. So and especially because New Nightmare was sort of after they ever were scary kind of thing. Yeah. Like it was sort of like the postmodern <laughs> film, you know what I mean? Right. Um but had you seen like had you seen a lot of the Nightmare on Elm Streets or any of the Nightmare on Elm I think Streets? I, I once once I knew I was gonna be involved with uh New Nightmare, I saw the first one. Okay. Um, but I didn't see two through six until I believe after much later. Well, two is skippable. <laughs> yeah, well, they all they're all they all have their moments. But all right, sure. start debating, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and like, what was your kind of reaction to that? Because for horror fans, if they found out they were going to be in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, they'd be like, "Oh my God, I'm going to be in it." Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because I was so stoked on the the character, it was, and I just I knew what was going to happen in the script. That I I got to fight Freddy. I was how fun! Like that was that was an adventure. It was exciting. Although you know, like in Pet Cemetery, of course, it's it's you dying. In New Nightmare, it's your father that dies, right? And do you remember that scene, like having to prepare for that, and what your reaction was going to be? Uh, to 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 my dad dying, or I don't think it was really. Oh, was it not your dad? <laughs> well, it, he does die, but it, you know, a new nightmare. It's interesting. I don't think it, the the police come to the door. Yeah, and it's Heather's reaction, it's but it, I don't think. Now that I'm thinking about it, does she? There's never like a reaction to that scene. I think she may have been. Wait. She we're talking about it much then, afterwards. And then she says, yeah. I wanna, I, and then she says, "I want to go see the body." Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if you had to actually kind of work that into your acting. There wasn't. I don't think there was an emotional scene 
to that because then there's everything else that's going on. I think we have a talk that's kind of heavy, but it's not like a, oh my God, my dad's dead. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Just the way it's written, it doesn't, it doesn't need that, I guess. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions? For Miko? Yep. On the end. Um, with all the new Stephen King movies that are coming out, It and Rain and Fall Grass, etc. Yeah. I just saw that the other night. It's really good. Yeah, I liked it. Weird, but good. Yeah. Um, any of his movies, besides Pet Cemetery, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, which one would you pick to be involved in? doesn't matter if it's come out, not come out. I am going to pick Pet Cemetery because I'm going to say since I didn't get to be in this remake, because I was kind of hoping, I was like, hey, that'd be kind of fun when I heard they were doing it. If they do another remake in 30 years, I can maybe play Judd. <laughs> so I'm going to go for that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I know that you were really young when you were on Pet Cemetery, but when you were like four or five, that's when the fellow that played Judd died. Yeah. How did... Did your mom tell you about that, and how did she explain that? Yeah, um, I know they really enjoyed hanging with him and said he was he was a great guy. Um, he wrote children's books, and he gave me a few signed copies that that you know we still have saved. And yeah, I wish I wish I could have got to know him more, um, especially you know at an older age now. And we do these reunion shows at uh, uh, with the rest of the gang, and he's like the only one that that was never able to, to be a part of it and see what it had become because I'm sure he would have loved it. You know? yeah. Him and church. church. Yeah. <laughs> that would be... Yeah, but imagine the poor guy that has to do a Q&A with church. Yeah. <laughs> or the autographs, like yeah, the stamp autographs the paw or, yeah, or something. Yeah, you can put like, it in, in like his kitty litter or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a question over there, I think. Yeah, yeah, we have a, a few of them actually. Yeah, three. Yeah, one one with the scars or the the claw marks, you know, and then two of them that are clean. So, yeah. All right. Anyone else have any questions? All right. Well, oh, one yeah, the, yeah, one yeah, in the back. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, uh, we'll probably be filming the the fan film uh, sometime next year. Um, and then uh, potentially some other projects, nothing, nothing too set in stone yet. Nowadays I work behind the camera more. I do uh, like ACing and DPing and DIT, just camera department. So I still work in film, but just uh, not in front of it as much anymore. Is it a choice? Yeah, you know, I, I do, I like that. Yeah, I'm always open to acting, but it's not my first, it's not like a passion anymore. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm always open to reading a script or, or seeing um, potentially, but it's, I'm not like out there auditioning every week and like I used to be, you know, which, which is a nice change of pace for sure. And like at what point did that kind of happen for you where you realized, uh, maybe this isn't quite my passion as much? Was it one particular project or? Uh, I went through a lot of family drama. Uh, teen years so I kind of always dabbled but it's been uh, less and less but then something will pop up that'll kind of drag me back but it's you know it's been organic in that way mm -hmm. yeah yep. okay so I'm being forced to ask this question but <laughs> All right. so a lot of us grew up before we saw Pet Cemetery. we know you from Full House sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was my next question come on <laughs> so what was, what was it like working with like some of the big personalities on there. Yeah, that was fun. Um, it was cool. I think John it, Stamos. Yeah, yeah. I always gave Uncle Jesse a hard time. Uh, yeah, I, I have like funny, just random memories of playing Pogs on the set um, with Jody, Jody Sweeten. Um, and she was kicking our butts because she was like older. I was like, how? What? And she was taking all our Pogs. Um, God, that was a terrible trend. Pogs? <laughs> what the hell was that? Um, I'm glad. It probably. was the next step up from marbles. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Something else for kids to fight over. Yeah. Yeah, so doing a show like that, you would rehearse f 
for Monday, like Monday to Thursday, and then film on Friday. So running around the set while it was empty was just kind of cool. You could you could see the bedrooms and the living room, and then walk behind it. And it's all plywood, and yeah, it, was, it was weird. It was fun though. It's a good experience for sure. Anyone? Uh, I so another kind of I know this is getting more into non horror territory, but Mercury Rising. Sure. Uh, in that film, the reason why that one stands out is that you played a child who is on the autism spectrum. Yeah. So, what was that like in terms of preparation for the role? How did they explain it to you? Uh, that that was probably the the longest character study I ever did. Uh, I worked with a doctor out of Chicago who was uh, an expert um, for months beforehand. It was a couple months process for the audition process and then from there uh, production linked me up with him and then there was a school nearby to where we were filming so I went out there a month beforehand uh, and worked with some kids, kind of developed uh, some more nuance to the character and then near the end I was going to school like as a classmate um, just to kind of live the character a little bit which is a lot I was you know more than done for anything else and that way when we did start filming whatever curveball or would happen in the scene I was already just able to to react in the moment to, to whatever that might be in character um, Do you have any memories of being at the the school with the other the other kids? A bit, yeah. Some of the things that yeah, you just experienced at the time. Seeing or... seeing the different levels and and you know ways autism can um, manifest, I guess. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, I made some friends, and yeah, cool. it was great. I mean, it's it was sort of ahead of its time a little bit because nowadays there's much more awareness of autism, autism spectrum disorder. Sure. And so it was sort of like, at that time, people didn't always know exactly what it what it was and everything like that. So yeah. the film kind of broke some new ground in, in that way. Yeah, it's not, not done too often. And uh, Bruce Willis, what was he? What was he like? Yeah, yeah, he's a he's an interesting character. Um, he was very nice, uh, very private, very kind of intimidating. You know, met famous people before. Some are more or less approachable and... Uh, uh, he likes to to keep his guard up, but you know I understand. He's, I probably would be too. You know, being Bruce freaking Willis. So. <laughs> <laughs> being John McClane. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was a good experience. Yeah, he's a nice guy. All right. Any other questions? Um. So music. You did get into music as well. Uh, for a while. Yeah. 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 So what's your what what kind of what's your music career like, and what have you put uh, out? I DJ'd for a while, and uh, and I'm more doing that more as a hobby now. But uh, I have like a mobile DJ business for a while. Cool. It's nothing too crazy. And I read somewhere that you actually did like a Halloween. Nope. CD. That's, nope. That's some some. Nope. In, some nope. some inaccurate nope. information. Yeah, nope. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I was like a kid. Was, no. Well, it, the way that it's written is it says nope. that you you wrote no no you wrote nope. the songs no no we're playing no. it we're playing it no at the party tonight. Cool. Well, guess I won't be there. <laughs> Have fun, y'all. But you wrote some songs, did you not? Or albums, actually. <laughs> of all the panels I've ever done, you almost I've avoided this, this forever. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. It, just, it took like mom had me in voice lessons, and I was like singing, and then oh, we could do like a little thing, and we did a little thing, and I don't know. It's for kids. It's corny. It's yeah. It was a long time ago. It's not very good, but there it is. Could you remix it though? Oh, oh snap! Yeah. It's uh, beyond saving. <laughs> <laughs> but I like I like the way you think. I appreciate that. Can I snack some more of that? Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Thanks, man. Gotcha. In our tiny cups. All right. Anything else? There must be some more. 
some more pet cemetery questions. New nightmare. Anything you want to talk about in terms of new projects that you got coming out? Uh, you already mentioned the fan film. And yeah, nothing's coming to mind. I just, uh, you know, walking down the hallway. This is all removed from the big event, and I was like, ah, nobody's gonna be at this thing. Like, uh, and then this is a lot. Like, thank you guys for coming to hang out and listen to whatever. BS stories I got, so I really appreciate that. That's, that's I mean, really cool. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, at the time, the first time you saw it, you probably did not think 20 years later, 30 years later, whatever it is, that you'd be standing in a room with fans, right? I peaked it, too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Can't complain, though. So. All right, guys. In the back, oh, oh, one more. Do you have a lot of people that, like, recognize you as you are now? Because oh, that's a good question. Very iconic as a kid. Sure. It's hit or miss. She thinks you're very cute. That's what she's trying to say. Oh, I think. (laughs) No, no, as a kid, as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, you know, it's hit or miss. It depends on where I am. If it's Halloween time, maybe a little more. Uh, It's it's kind of fun. I have the best of both worlds because in L.A., everybody knows somebody that's in the industry, so nobody really cares. If I leave the state, maybe a little more. If um, it's it's nice to not be too recognized, but then I get to come to things like this and pretend to be famous for a weekend. So, yeah. yeah. It's random, you know. No, no, not not like I used to be, but I kind of, yeah, as a kid it was a little too much maybe. Now I could handle it, but at the time it was, it could be. I, the, the hard part was, you know, being surrounded and everybody asking questions faster than you could answer. It's like, what do you, what do you want me to do? Like... I don't even know how to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I think now I could handle it a little better as an adult. It's just a lot to throw at a kid. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm happy with with my level of my W list level of of uh, fame. <laughs> like not A list, not B list, but yeah. You're, you're, you're an M, come on. I'm somewhere you're down G. the line. Yeah, I'm a G. I'm the OG, the original Gage. So. Oh, snap. Uh, you know you're signing that on someone's... Ah, uh, uh, who knows, maybe. <laughs> so just to add to that question there, so when you recognize nowadays, is it more as from Pet Cemetery, or do you still get asked to say the penis vagina line? Yeah, you never know. Like, the horror fans are definitely Gage and Dylan, but uh, Full House and, and, and Kindergarten Cop are big ones, too. Um, it just, it's interesting to see what people connect with. It depends on the person. So, man. I guess, I mean, I do have one question. That's that a lot of horror fans around, like, my age, we have stories of, Oh, when I was a kid, my parents didn't like me watching horror movies, or I'd get in trouble if I got, and you had to sneak it, and it was something you had to do. Yeah. You obviously had a very different experience because your parents were putting you in horror movies. Maybe not, you know, specifically horror movies, but that's sure. where they were putting you. Yeah. So just, I don't know, like, what is that, how did that affect your whole family dynamic, or the, rela- like, what was your relationship like with your parents? Were they much cooler than, yeah. than the average suburban mom and dad? I don't think, I don't think the content, I mean, there was definitely scripts that we passed on because they were not, you know... The content was a little uh, disagreeable, but uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think Pet Cemetery or New Nightmare that was ever, or you know, the line in Kindergarten Cop. I think it was well thought out that it was in good taste, and it's not like I said, like filming isn't um, scary as it is watching it. Um, so they were they were mindful of, of that, and I'm thankful, you know, for the decisions they made. In that regard, um, there's one kind of funny thing that happened on Spawn. Um, I was a huge fan of the Spawn comics, and uh, I was collecting them and getting really into it. It was kind of my comic phase. And my parents started reading it, and they're like, "I we don't think you should be reading this. This is about the devil, and this is like devil worship. Like This is pretty dark. These are some heavy themes that you shouldn't be reading at this age. So they took them all away, and then a few months later, I auditioned for the Spawn movie, and I get a call back, and then like I get it, and I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna do the movie if I can't read the comic. That's like the source <laughs> material. You have to give me my comics back, and I got them to give me my comics back, and oh, I started, wow. yeah. So I, I kind of like hypocrites. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, Spawn. That's a good. That's, I forgot about Spawn. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. Oh, there's another one here. Looking back, the scripts that were passed on by your family. Are there any you wish you were in? Oh wow. Um, no, not really. I think they made the right call. There was, and I think like watching it as an adult, I can appreciate the movie and get it and get why they didn't want me to be in it. Um, yeah, I think I think they made the right call. There was one really messed up movie that I remember for whatever reason called Happiness. I don't know if anybody saw that. Yeah, yeah, I do. Super dark. It's I all do. about like mental illness and like, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm. I think they made the right calls in a lot of that regard. So. But there was no sort of like movie that big movie that came out and you're like, damn it, I could have I could have read for that part. Um, yeah, well, there was one that I, I really. Uh, there was a script that um, I, w I was going to have to audition, but I guess I got kind of ahead of the curve. Um, they said they had me in mind for it. They really, really thought I would be a fit. Um, read it. It was awesome. Super stoked for it. it seemed like it was probably a sure thing. Um, and we knew they were shopping it around to um, other, like, or like pretty big stars. Um, I think Mel Gibson was on the list for a while. Um, they had a few names that they they were saying, so we were like, cool, let's, you know, keep us posted, let's see what happens. And then um, Bruce Willis got signed on to it, and I just worked with him on Mercury Rising, and it was too similar, so I didn't even get to audition for it. It was such a bummer. But totally worked out. I wouldn't have gotten, gotten it anyway because Haley Joel Osment did amazing in Sixth Sense. So, oh, you know, really? kind of, one of those kind of things. What can you do? He was great. Like, I would have. You just dropped the bomb on us. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It Sometimes been, it happens like you that. You could have been you know? saying ghosts on all of yeah. your autographs for Who the rest knows? of your life. Jeez. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> wow, this has been a bummer. So. It's not a bummer. <laughs> no, I'm not bummed about it. It was It's a cool thing, you know. So. Yeah. Well, no, no. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, any other questions? All right, guys. Well, unless you have anything else to say. Uh, just thanks for coming just out. Talk about yeah, it. guys, and enjoy the, uh, the rest of the con. There's tons of good panels for the rest of the weekend. Just talk about it. So, yeah. Everyone give it up. See for you there. Diesel.